The chapter on vision is about one of the first people on the planet who ever has relearned how to see. It is about one of the first people to ever get a retinal implant. So uh, it's about Dean Lloyd, who was born with normal vision, lost it as an adult due to retinitis pigmentosa, which is a genetic disorder. Then he volunteered to become one of the first people to get the uh, second sight Argus II, which is an implant that's actually inside his eye. He wears a pair of spectacles with a camera mounted over the bridge of his nose. That camera translates the images to electronic impulses that stimulate the surviving photoreceptors at the back of his eye. And then that travels up to his brain and he perceives a certain form of vision. It's not what he remembers from when he was a young man. He doesn't see three-dimensional objects. He doesn't see colors. Uh, what he sees basically is flashes of light that indicate contrast points uh, between dark areas and light areas, but it's enough that he can navigate, he can recognize objects. When he was staring at me, he said, um, he can't see organic material, he can't see biological material, but he said, uh, he said, uh, I can see your eyes, your eyes are glowing. And I was like, what, what do you mean? And then what we realized is he was seeing the reflection off of my glasses. Um, so, so that's one example. I, uh, I went to watch a, a robotic surgery, which was a really amazing experience and why I had to get so many vaccinations. Um, but uh, I went to see Dr. Sherry Wren, who was operating on a patient from across the room. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted to understand haptics for robotics. Because right now, doctors who are doing teleoperated surgery have to do it totally visually. They don't actually touch, they don't get touch feedback for the patient, and that can cause some problems. They don't know how tightly they're pulling on a suture. It takes a very experienced surgeon to be able to judge visually what's happening when they're, they're uh, kind of palpating within the body uh, with a robot. So I uh, learned about some of the labs at Stanford that are working on uh, basically how to improve these robotic devices to render haptic feedback to a surgeon. But what I, what I realized this was leading to is actually not for surgery, it's for the development of a better generation of neuroprosthetics, for the development of robotic limbs that would not only be able to move uh, and be controlled by thought, but would be able to render touch feedback so that a person actually knows how tightly they're gripping an object so that they know if something is about to fall from their grasp. Um, one of the things that the researchers told me is that um, one of the things people who use prosthetics ask for most is to be able to feel the warmth of a loved one's hand. They're saying touch is very important. 